I'm Hilary from Newbold Parish Church. If you think back to last week's assembly on the Ten Commandments that Ben took, do you remember what the Fifth Commandment was? Honour your father and mother. Treat them with respect. So will you be doing something special this Sunday for your mother on Mother's Day? Breakfast in bed? Giving her a card or maybe some flowers? Maybe you could tidy your room or help around the house. I always liked it when my children did that. Today we're going to look at the story from the Bible about Hannah. Hannah loved children and wished that she could have a baby of her own, that she would be a parent and a mother. I'm going to hand over to Ben and Rhoda now to tell you the story. Here's the story of Hannah from 1 Samuel. Eli strode across the courtyard, so angry he was ready to burst. Never in all his years as a priest in God's temple had he seen anyone behaving like this. He had seen a woman come into the temple and take part in a sacrifice. After the sacrifice was over, she walked away and collapsed on the floor as if she was drunk. Drunk! In the Lord's house! As he got closer, he saw that her lips were moving, but she wasn't making any noise. She must have had so much wine, thought Eli, that she can't even speak. Hannah sat on the floor and cried. She couldn't cope any longer. She had no one else to turn to but God. She knew her husband, Elkanah, loved her very much. He always gave her the best meat when they had a meal, but she couldn't help feeling second best to Penaniah. Penaniah was Elkanah's other wife. People were allowed to have more than one wife in those days. And Penaniah took every opportunity to rub it in that she had children, but Hannah didn't. As she sat on the floor of the place of worship, Hannah remembered all the cruel and horrible things Penaniah had said to her because she had no children. Thinking about these things only made Hannah cry harder. Hannah loved children and so wanted to have a child of her own. She knew everyone thought she was a failure because she didn't have any children. So she started to pray. She didn't know what else to do. Surely God would help her. Surely he, surely he wouldn't let Penaniah make jokes about her forever. Surely he would give her a child. Suddenly Hannah noticed the priest coming towards her. He was very angry and he started to shout at her before he'd even reached her. How long are you going to sit here being drunk? shouted Eli. You should go away and come back later when you're sober. He was so angry. When she heard what Eli said, Hannah started to panic. I'm not drunk. My life has been so awful. I didn't know what to do. I came to the temple and I started to cry and pray at the same time. I'm so miserable. I don't think I'll ever stop crying. Eli suddenly calmed down. He realised that Hannah wasn't drunk at all. He saw how honest she was and how much she wanted God to answer her prayer. It's okay, he said kindly. You can go home now. I'm sure that God has heard your prayer and will answer you. Hannah smiled. Thank you. You've been so kind to me. And with that, she got up and left. The next morning, Elkanah and Heaven, and sorry, Elkanah and Hannah left for home. Pen and I kept saying nasty things to Hannah all the way home. But not long after they'd returned, Hannah found out that she was about to have a baby. God really had answered her prayer. The end. Thank you, Ben and Rhoda. What are these? Perhaps you recognise the traffic lights at Lansley Green Junction. Sometimes when you're at a red light and you're desperate for it to change, like when you're late for school, red light seems to take forever, doesn't it? 
And you might think to yourself, oh, I wish we could move on. Would that be a good idea? Uh, no. You never know what might crash into you. Well, prayer is like traffic lights. Hannah was desperate for a child. She'd come to worship God in the holy place and had pleaded with him to give her a child. Her pleading prayers had been so over the top that the priest thought she was drunk. But God heard her request. She became pregnant and gave birth to a boy whom she named Samuel. Now Samuel, the name Samuel, means someone from God. But does God always give us what we ask for? Look at the green light. Sometimes God gives us what we want when we ask for it. He gives us the green light with yes and go. Like a good father, God loves to bless us and give us things that will please us. Obviously, God knew that Hannah wanted a baby and what would be best for her. Her relationship with him was strengthened as a result of his gift to her. When we ask for something, we need to ask ourselves, will this help us to know and love God better? Look at the amber light. Sometimes what we are asking for is a good thing for us, but now is not the right time. We have to wait, and waiting for some people can be a bit of a challenge. There may be things God wants us to learn as we wait. The first time we read about Hannah asking for a child was when she was in, in the holy place, place praying. But this can't have been the first time ever that she'd asked God for a child. All the other times before then, God heard a request, but he'd said, wait a bit. He wanted her to learn to wait and to trust him. Look at the red light. Sometimes, what we're asking for is not what would be good for us, and God knows that. He, stay, he says, stop and no. But we might not want to hear that. We have to accept that he knows best, and we have to listen in case no is the answer. It's not that he's any less generous, just that he is loving, and knows what's best for us and others. For Hannah, this was not the answer on this occasion. God gave Hannah a son, and she gratefully received him. But she also promised to make a gift to God. When she prayed in the holy place, she promised that if she had a child, she would give her child to God. She kept her promise. When Samuel was old enough, she left him with Eli the priest. Every year she went to see him, but this was her way of giving to God. Samuel was to become a great leader. God gives to us and children are one way in which we see his generosity. I have three children, and I'm very grateful to God for this special gift he's given me. My prayer for them is that God will bless them and be generous to them in turn. We can also give to God. Hannah showed her gratitude in a very unusual way. Don't worry. God certainly doesn't want every child to be left in the care of someone else. 
but we need to show our gratitude to God and to our mothers this coming Mother's Day by saying a big thank you. Chris is going to end our assembly by saying a thank you prayer. Let us pray. Thank you God that you are a generous God and answer prayer. Thank you especially for mothers, fathers, grandparents and carers. Thank you that you welcome our thanks and gifts. May we be grateful this week in what we say and do and may we give to others. Amen.